the last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. Samus is a kick-ass intergalactic bounty hunter with powerful projectiles, intricate movement, and deadly traps. She plays very heavily on pressuring the ground to try draining your shield until you give her predictable jump patterns and jump timings that she can take advantage of with all of her different anti-airs. Or she'll shoot you, or she'll grab you for whiffing while attempting to stop her from charging her shot. Consequently, the faster the opponent's approaching game is, the more rushed she might feel especially if they also thrive at close-range combat. The power suit allows her to morph into a ball, making her recovery extremely flexible, as well as she can trap you at the ledge with bombs and get you off stage for an edge guard. End up off stage against her and death might be staring you in the face. Because of her power suit, she's not only heavy, but extremely floaty. Samus is unique in that she struggles to land quickly. Instead, her strength lies in being able to mix up her landings very slowly with bombs, especially since morphing gives much better mobility and and drift to the left and right while also being a smaller target to hit. It also makes her extremely hard to hit off stage as her recovery gets a lot better while in the morph ball, especially if she also bounces off of bombs to extend and stall out her recovery. Charge Shot is the very core of how Samus plays. Once it's fully charged, it'll be an extremely powerful option to completely cover the ground or cover the air. It can also be deployed to potentially cover all tech options. It does a ton of damage and shield damage, as well as it's typically safe against shield depending on the charge and distance that you shoot from. Charging on the ground allows you to cancel into a roll, grab, shield, screw attack, and more than anything, a jump. While airborne, she'll be able to be reverse and wave bounce, as well as double jump out of a charge. It'll be in the opponent's best interest not to let Samus charge up her shot to whatever degree she wants. Playing very defensively against Samus is usually a bad idea, as once it's fully charged, it'll be overpowering against shield, an incredible anti-air or whiff punish, as well as it can generally scare opponents to jump more because it's ready, and will slow down the opponent's play against you as they have to respect the possibility of the charge shot. The only way you can play a defensive playstyle is if you have something like a reflector, psi magnet, Hylian shield, your own projectiles that have a hurt box, and so on. Against the possibility of reflectors, she'll have to stick with shooting non-charge shots instead, unless she's looking to snipe a recovery. In fact, the majority of the time, it'll actually benefit you not to charge it fully, as at low percent, you'll want to charge it to 90% since it'll combo into dash attack and grab as long as you roughly shoot from the burst range. The higher and higher the percents are on the opponent, the less you'll want to charge, to a point where at high percents, a non-charge shot can combo into things like back airs or pivot cancel forward smashes. Charging it all the way will benefit you for actually killing the opponent, but it takes away her mix-up movement option, so a lot of the time it'll be more about getting the right type of charge rather than getting a full charge. Shooting will however be a big risk at burst range, as if predicted it could be jumped over and punished. This is where understanding the opponent's burst range is super important for her neutral and long-term adaptation game, as a lot of the time Samus plays a counteractive game based on understanding your intentions and what you need to do, rather than playing an approaching heavy or callout heavy game. The typical burst range is around this distance, anything beyond this range and you're completely fine pressuring with charge shots, missiles, and zares to make it really hard for the opponent to step into the burst range. Once they are in burst range though, you'll have to start interacting with the opponent. They'll have a few different intentions. One intention is attempting to approach with something like a safe tilt or jump and safely land the aerial. Their second intention could be to approach with a callout against you, like dash attack or dash grab. And the third intention could be to approach with a shield dash to close in at mid-range where Samus can feel very uncomfortable due to her lack of speed and committal decisions. Or they will not be approaching at all even though they are at burst range since they are anticipating you covering one of these intentions first. And then they'll punish you as your anti-airs and grabs are still very committal. This is where it'll be important for Samus to understand the counterplays, especially dashing away to grab opponents attempting to call you out out, and anti-airing opponents attempting to jump in. She'll be able to adjust her anti-airs really well depending on how you jump. Not only can she use short hop aerials to quickly react to short hops, full hop aerials to react to full hops, 
but short hop forward air and up air will be really good against full hops in as a reaction. Screw attack out of shield preemptively if they are straight above you, as well as it can punish bad approaches in general, especially because of the intangibility at the start, as well as it'll do massive damage against shields if they jump and land on platforms. The jump aerial version of screw attack being much better. With Samus, it's best to keep your anti-airs as reactionary, rather than a call out or read. Otherwise, you could also just keep dashing around to trap punishing landings, as again, if you whiff your anti-air, it might get punished. While at burst range on occasion as a mix-up, she could also try to call you out with dash attack, dash grabs, dash back air as burst options, as well as she could try to simply short hop and approach with aerial pressure. It's just that it's risky because of how floaty she is, and so it's punishable. So it's not really a primary strength of hers, as even when she actually lands the aerial low, she won't have the best shield pressure follow-up responses and will instead be dashing away or jab into mix-ups. Normally, the mix-up will either be a jab to dash away, jump away Zare, pivot grab, or anything else you want. She'll also be able to keep jabbing if you press down on the control stick in between the jabs to cancel the animation. This is why she'll mostly stick to pressuring with Zare instead as it keeps her safe and there will never be a risk of opponents punishing her. And instead, she might force you to jump, release the shield to run at her, rolls away, which she can preemptively pressure, or force you to wait and shield. Be careful though, as if you get too comfortable pressing Zares, the opponent will run at you and punish you before you land or just full hop over you. Most of the time, it'll be even better to short hop back while you charge as you get four potent mix-ups. Not only can you shoot or not shoot as a mix-up to potentially grab shields, but you also get to double jump anti-air if you see them jumping in against you to get over the charge shot, as well as you can double jump and cancel it into a bomb to again restrict grounded approach and potentially condition a jump. Obviously, you can simply just bomb and back off from burst range as well. Once or twice, the condition jumps as well. They might be stubborn and refuse to jump, which is where your super missile will be really good, as not only do they deal good shield damage, especially with charge shot ready, but will also allow you to potentially anti-air their jump, avoiding the missile. Combo off the missile if it hits, as well as you can approach together with the super missile. As a mix-up, she could also use her homing missile, which you could short hop and shoot to work around reflectors. Otherwise, you could use them for her advantage state, or during the disadvantage state to aid her recovery. Keep in mind that you can also short hop and shoot your charge shot for the most amount of option coverage, since it'll still hit tall grounded opponents, short hops, potential full hops, as well as shield poke, assuming it's not a small target. As well as faking your shots can be really good once percents are high to freak out the opponent. She will have mix-ups like full hop and plant a bomb right above the opponent, or maybe just getting it from attempting to land out of disadvantage. This will obviously deny the jump and combo into anything if it hits, as well as if they keep shielding, the bomb will deal a good amount of damage. There is, however, two hits on the bomb, which will mostly only happen if the bomb hits the edge of the front shield. If both of those connect against shield, you'll have a very easy time breaking the shield with a full charge shot. Either way, Samus will be extremely demanding in terms of option coverage and conditioning, so every little step and decision she does needs to be on point and meaningful. As for Dark Samus, the only relevant differences is that the roll animation is easier to punish, but both rolls end 3 frames faster than Samus's, while the double jump is a bit bigger and easier to hit. Dark Samus will also shoot a bit lower than Samus. As much of a zoner as she is, she'll also have some crazy combos if she hits the right moves at the right time. Finding grabs against opponents will be really good, as at low percents it'll combo into forward air, or even better, neutral air or back air, as it'll deal more damage and put the opponent in an even worse spot where you might be able to read their tech option or jump if they DI up. On a few characters that DI away or down and away, you could also dash attack. Around 40% it'll stop comboing if the opponent DIs away, but will combo and even kill confirm if the opponent DIs in. Otherwise, up throw will kill at a really high percents, as well as her forward throw and back throw will set up for edge guards or ledge traps. Yeah. 
Zare will allow you to combo into almost anything, but it depends on how close you hit the move as well as if you moved in while doing it. It's not consistent, but sometimes you'll connect two hits, which will lead into a lot more consistent combos. The second hit will also set up protect chasing above 100%, which can easily let you score kills. She can also charge shot in the air and press air dodge. She'll cancel the charge at frame 2, 3, and 4, and on frame 5 and 6, you can press grab or attack for Zare to come out. Anything sooner or later than that timing, and the Zare won't come out. Otherwise, you could also use this move to snipe opponents off stage. Neutral air can be approached with if you land it low, but you could also do it earlier if you plan on crossing it up with the second hit. Hitting it leads into simple combos at low percents, while at mid percents it'll force a tech situation. Back air can also be approached with if landed low, dealing good shield damage and will launch opponents for a tech situation at low percents, as well as there is an inner weak hit and a long lasting weak hit that sets up into tech chases too, as well as off stage it'll lead into another back air. It'll be your strongest aerial if you space it right and hit the foot, making it amazing for corner pressure. It's just like most back airs, she'll be able to shield and punish, follow up with a tilt, or another back air. Or dash away to punish aggression, roll zin, and even react to jumps with full hop back air. As well as you can B-reverse your charge shot for mix-ups. You could also land with it extra low to slide a tiny distance. Forward air can be okay as a rare mix-up, but it won't be safe if whiffed or against shield as the opponent should have enough time to punish you before you land. Up air could be used as a mix-up on shield if you predict the opponent parrying as well as it can shield poke tall characters, but if shielded normally it'll typically get punished. Otherwise, it'll mainly be used for platform pressure. Once you connect an up air, it'll connect into more. And with platforms, you might even score an early kill if it's done perfectly. If there are no platforms to work with, it'll typically be better to just set up a bomb to limit where the opponent can land and drift. Air dodges can be easily punished, and double jumps away can potentially be sniped, as well as you might drain their resources and kill them for it anyway. If you think the opponent is going to mash attack after the first up air, you could also double jump and charge shot, but it'll lose to air dodge and double jump away. Down air can be used as a mix-up against a few characters with bad out-of-shield options, but will generally also be punishable. It'll more so be amazing at punishing techs in place, tech rolls in, or spot on as a hard read, and will give you an incredible reward at almost all percents. It'll literally lead into almost everything. Aerials, tilts, smashes, but also full charge shots for kills and even half charge shots which can lead into pivot forward smash as well as aerials. And of course, off stage it'll spike unless you hit the initial hit on the sides. Up tilt can be safe against shield at max range and hits really hard if you anti your opponents with it. Hitting grounded opponents lets you combo into down tilt, smash attack to set up for tech situations, and even aerials. Forward tilt is good at pressuring shield at max range and will be stronger the better you space it, as the inner hits are weaker but better for tech chasing the higher the percents get. Down tilt can be used to quickly punish opponents in front of you, just be careful as it'll lose to jumps and shields, therefore it'll more so be used at the ledge to punish recoveries as it has a pretty big hitbox. Yeah! 
Up smash is pretty much useless against smaller characters, but it's good against bigger body characters to either catch landings, read rolls, and even shield poke. And dash attack will never combo and instead will just launch opponents to a bad spot. It'll also cross up at close range as well as kill at high percents if hit with the initial hit. Samus's strongest advantage will always be her ledge trapping, as sometimes there will just be no answers to escape it, but the execution of it is actually a lot harder than it looks. Something you need to know is that when you hold down during your down special, then you'll shave off 7 frames of end lag. This will very much be taken advantage of before the ledge trap to rain bombs on the opponent attempting to recover. The execution of this is very subtle and precise. What you'll want to do is to press down special, tilt diagonally down and away, and then diagonally down and forward, and then down again to press down special, and then repeat the input over and over. It's hard since if you tilt fully to the left or right, it'll be slower, and if you hold a direction for too long, you'll slide too far away. So again, it's a very subtle but incredibly important thing to master as the opponent could practically end up eating as many bombs as you'd successfully deploy and rack up insane amount of damage. Another incredibly important thing is to learn how to make two transitions off of this. The first transition is to actually end up off stage to be able to combine the bomb pressure with aerials. Or if you think that the opponent is going to grab the ledge, then you'll need to transition into planting the bomb at the very edge of the ledge so that you start the ledge trap. If you plant the bomb too far away from the ledge, the opponent will do a normal get up and get pushed away. But if it's planted at the very edge, it'll get pushed in, which allows for much bigger punishes. Preferably, you'll want your charge shot ready during the ledge trap, as standing at the right position lets you cover roll, regular get up, get up attacks, and potentially snipe jumps if you predict a ledge jump and shoot early. So it's an incredibly scary trap. The bomb can punish opponents stalling, but the charge shot normally won't, as that will only work against a very few characters. And if you're Dark Samus, it'll work against even more characters. If you need to reset the trap, it's usually better to full hop and then down B to avoid getting punished, as well as you potentially still cover jump and roll. Either way, you don't actually have to charge shot. You can simply mix up with up tilt, turn around and space backers, Speed jumps with back airs, read roll with down air, jab the roll into a bomb for a combo, and even just charge smash attacks to cover multiple options. As well as you can just simply try to two frame with down smash, down tilt, or up tilt. If you're further away, a homing missile could also be used for ledge pressure. As for her ledge options, except for being a threat with a potential charge shot, she'll also be able to double jump in with forward air to try anti-airing short hop or cross up a shield, as well as ledge jump with an aerial to anti-air full hops. As a mix-up, she can also ledge jump and immediately bomb. If you slide out while at least touching the edge, you'll regain your ledge of invincibility. You could also hang on with your tether recovery, tilt down and double jump for pressure and then re-grab the ledge with invincibility since the ledge was never grabbed. Otherwise, you could also double jump and tether recover and tilt down with good timing as a mix-up as well. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And if you want to support my work, then please help me out on Patreon. And to all my Patreons, thank you so much for all the support. And feel free to come by my Twitch as I stream almost daily from 4pm EST.